Hello, my name is Álvaro, and today I'm going to talk about two topics that I really, really enjoy, dogs and mathematics. We know that dogs are quite smart, but do they know how to do mathematics? Let's start with the things that we know about dogs. They love walks. Walks are the most exciting part of their days, the moment when they have the control. Anyone who has ever walked a dog knows that they enjoy nothing more than pulling on the leash and moving around. So, when they walk, they trace exciting trajectories that depend on the length of the leash and the trajectory of their owners. That is the kind of mathematics I would love to tell you about today. In order to be able to mathematically model the path that is taken by your dog, we first need to make some assumptions to help to simplify the problem. Let's start with the following scenario. You decide to wrap your dog's leash around the trunk of a tree while you go to talk to some friends, let's say. Soon, your dog decides to set itself free, following a trajectory that is given by the restriction that the leash provides in the dog's movement. Now, it would be interesting to ask ourselves, what is the shape of the path that the dog travels when unraveling? As we can see here, it kind of looks like a spiral. However, there are many different shapes or types of spirals, so which one is ours? We could try to compare it with some famous examples, but probably the best way to figure it out is to study it from a mathematical point of view. Finding the trajectory of a string that has been wrapped around a curve is an issue that has been raised in many mathematical problems. For instance, in the 16th century, the mathematician Christian Huygens encountered this problem while working in the design of a pendulum that measured time accurately. To build such a pendulum, he placed curved wooden planks at the top of the pendulum to limit the trajectory of the swinging weight. Given the curve that matches the profile of the wooden planks, he decided to give the name involute to the curve that describes the trajectory that the weight follows. This curve, the involute, is precisely the trajectory that our dog follows. The way involutes are computed is the following. Given a curve, in this case the blue one, we first fix a point O on it, which will be the point from which we will start tracing the involute. Then, for every point P of the curve, we trace a tangent line, and in that line we mark the point Q, that is as far from the point P, as the length of the curve between the points O and P. Going back to our dogs, what we are saying is that the distance between the dog and the trunk at all points is equal to the amount of leash that has been unwrapped. The involute will then be the curve that we get when we consider all possible points Q. Finally, it is easy to see that then every point of the involute forms a right angle with the tangent lines to our initial curve. As long as we begin with a curve that behaves well, this procedure allows us to compute its involute. For example, the involute of a parabola is the pointy curve that you can see on screen or this curve that resembles a pin, and it's called nephroid, has an involute which is a bigger copy of itself. Computing the equation of an involute is, in general, quite difficult, involving parametric coordinates and integration. However, the particular case of the computation of the involute of a circle turns out to be fairly simple. In this case, the parametrization x of t equals cosine of t and y of t equals sine of t simplifies the calculations, as it can be seen that the length of the curve at time t is also t. By computing the tangent line at every point, we can prove that the involute of a circle is given by that parametric equation, which does not seem very simple. But believe me when I tell you that the equation of the involutes of most curves looks much worse. Well, involutes are present in many geometrical problems. In particular, as we said before, in those that involve strings that are wrapped around curves or surfaces. But surprisingly, the main application that involutes have is in industry, where they are used to design gears that run smoothly. By creating the teeth of the gears with the shape of a circular involute, one can minimize the friction between two gears and reduce torque variation. So, after all this banter about involutes, what do you think about my initial question? Do dogs know how to do mathematics? In my opinion, unless your dog is a genius, I would say that the answer is no. But still, 
Docs can help mathematicians in two ways, by being an inspiration to find new exciting problems and by offering us our love and support. And let's be honest, we all know that that's more than a cat will ever do for you.